Hello, my name is Paul Wolliver. I'm the owner of Pinellas Power Products. This is the installation instruction video for the four function wireless remote control that will fit the Predator 3500, the Power Horse 3500, and the Echo Bearcat 3500 inverter series generators. The uh, kit consists of first a uh, written pamphlet that explains that you bought the greatest thing since sliced bread, a flash drive that contains a copy of this video that you're watching right now, a choke actuator, because if you own one of these you know that it needs choke to start, two transmitters, the radio receiver module, hardware for mounting the uh, choke actuator and some zip ties and then the bracket to mount the choke actuator. Uh, as I said earlier, this kit will fit the Predator 3500, Power Horse 3500, and Echo Bearcat 3500. I'm going to be shooting the video using the Predator 3500. The first step will be to remove this side cover. Just unsnap the uh, rubber pin that goes into the side cover and take these two screws out. They're both Phillips head screws. These screws are captive so they won't fall out of the cover on you. You'll have to unsnap the cover because there are pins on the cover that go into rubber grommets on the side of the generator. These pins right here will snap into these three rubber grommets and these hooks will latch the cover into place. As you may or may not have noticed, the generator that I'm going to be shooting this video on already has my remote fuel kit on it. You'll notice that my remote fuel kit has a fuel pump in it. It is not one of the cheap through the cap, one size fits all methods. It is not gravity feed. It does not require the fuel tank to be above the generator. The fuel tank can be even with the generator or below the generator actually and it will still work fine. Next step is to pull the opposite side cover off. The opposite side cover, you'll see that there are two little rubber caps that go into the top of the generator. Pull the rubber caps out either with your fingernail or with a flathead screwdriver. Then there are Phillips head screws below each of the caps. These screws are not captive, so you'll have to be careful not to lose them. The screws look like this. You'll notice that there's no flat washer or lock washer. However, there is a flange on the head of each screw. If you need more information on the kit, you'll notice that there is a link in the description section below this video. The next step will be to remove the three bolts in the bottom. These are all shoulder bolts and they are identical. And there are three more Phillips head screws in the back cover and they're identical to the two that you remove from the top. And then there is one Phillips head screw in the front and you'll notice I'm not removing the screws that hold the uh, control panel in place. I'm removing a screw from the plastic cover above the control panel area.
Next thing we're going to do is pull the uh, wheels off of the uh, generator. To remove the wheels, either use a block of wood or a hammer or something like that to uh, prop the, uh, the generator up with so that the wheels are up off of the table. The hub caps come off very simple. Just slide a flat blade screwdriver into this notch. Once you get the hub caps off, there are cotter keys. And a flat washer. Now the front will have a lock ring behind it for the brake. You notice the rear does not have one, but that goes to the brake mechanism. Now this particular generator, as I said before, has my fuel kit on it, so it has the fuel inlet port installed right here, so it's recessed into the side housing so you don't catch your knee on it, as well as the uh, recoil start mechanism. In order to make it easier to videotape, I'm going to remove the fuel line because the fuel line will not allow the cover to come out very far. So if you've already got one of my fuel kits on it, you know how the clamps disengage and I can show you once we get it completely off. So now we've got the hose off. And I'm going to pull the recoil start rope out a couple of feet. Then I'm going to reach inside and clamp it to hold the recoil start rope. So then the cover comes off and you can just let the cover hang from the recoil start rope. The clamps that I was talking about earlier are straightforward and simple. They're a snapper clamp. So you squeeze it in to clamp it, or you rotate sideways like that, and it comes apart. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is install the choke. So to install the choke, take an 8 millimeter socket and remove this bolt at the top of the starter motor. Then you'll come over to the choke actuator. You'll have a bracket and then a bag of uh, screws and other hardware. Take one of the screws out of the bag you can discard the rest of the stuff you'll never use it or save it for yourself for some other purpose. The choke is going to sit right in here So what we're going to do is take this screw and run it into the back mounting hole.
you'll notice that this bracket has a cut at an angle on it. That's so it'll clear the starter housing. So take a flashlight, hopefully a better working flashlight than this one, okay. And you can look through and you can see the choke mechanism on the other side, which is right over here. And here's what it's going to pull on, is the choke mechanism. So first thing we'll do is disengage the cable. To do that, just slide the spring back and lift the cable up out of this drum. Like this. You'll notice that the drum has a large recess and a small recessed area. The large recessed faces away from your body and that's what the spring goes into. So that that way the manual choke does not disengage from you. So at any rate, you're going to go over to the other side and you're going to feed this wire through and it's going to loop right over this, just like that. See if I can get a little bit more light on it. Is that reflecting in the camera? No. You're seeing it good? Okay, great. You're going to take this large loop and put it over this and then put that wire back in place. So let's go over to the other side here. We're going to slide this through and have it come out the back side. And what we want to do is see how far over we can move the choke mechanism before it interferes with any other parts. Okay. So on this one, I'm going to slide it right about to the center of this slot and then snug the screw down. Incidentally, there are a couple of different diameter screws in the bag of hardware. Make sure you choose the diameter screw that's large enough to actually bite into the plastic. When I first pulled the screw out, I pulled one that was slightly smaller out of the bag of hardware, and it doesn't really engage in the plastic very well. Um, grab the larger screw, and whenever you test fit it, make sure it engages into the plastic well. Okay, that actually looks like a nice fit. So now we're going to take the bolt that came out of this hole. You got two wires coming out of the back of the generator. On this choke, you're going to take the blue wire. I know it sounds counterintuitive because green should be ground, but if you run the green wire to ground and the blue to positive, it pushes out and we need it to pull back. So we're going to put the blue wire to the mounting screw see our wire loop right here. We're going to loop that over this drum. And again, as I said earlier, there's a large recess in the drum. That faces the spring, which is away from your body. So you'll take the spring and you'll push it back. And now when you grab the stock knob on the front of the generator, 
when you turn it the first click that would be the on position but the second click here will be the choke position and you'll notice that the manual choke still works okay now come back over to this side you'll need a 10 millimeter socket to remove the black or the wire from the black nut on the uh, start solenoid the red wire is hot all the time the other post is not hot all the time so we're not going to run into a danger of sparks flying take the nut off of this post and remove the ring terminal that is stock put the green wire on the post then put the stock wire back on the post and then put the original flat washer lock washer and nut back in place pull the rubber boot down over the post and the nut and now the choke is assembled keep in mind that the cover that goes over here is foam backed so you're not going to do any damage to this incidentally you'll notice that there's a little resistance in the choke mechanism when it pulls shut it doesn't pop all the way open it just barely starts to uh, ease back open again when you start the generator up you got the vibration of the generator and it kind of agitates itself so if you take a uh, choke mechanism you'll pull out on it you'll notice that there's just a little bit of force required to extend it back out so it'll pull the choke in like this this spring and the return spring on the choke are pulling out on it it's not quite strong enough to pull it out instantly but as the generator fires up and runs it'll come all the way out so just to make sure that you've got everything put together correctly you go over to the front of the generator and leave the uh, the um, master switch in the off position but we're just going to tap the starter and you want to come over here and make sure that the choke engages when you tap the starter and as I say it won't retract and open all the way afterward unless the generator is actually running but you see that the choke did choke so your choke is working and we'll get to it when we get uh, the rest of the generator assembled we'll start it up and I'll show you that it opens all the way So the choke is essentially installed now. Now we're going to do the electrical. We're going to leave these two covers off so I can go over the different options on how to install the antenna. Okay, the first step is to remove the knob from the master switch. I call it a master switch because it is a fuel selector valve as well as there's a cam on the back of it that operates a micro switch that shuts the generator off and that's why it's got an off a run and a start position so off would be the micro switch engage which kills the ignition through the magneto then run would be the fuel in the on position and the micro switch disconnected and start would be the choke position there is a Phillips head screw in this that can fall out be careful not to lose it or if you see that Phillips head screw on your bench when you're done it means you forgot to put it back in there are six more screws holding the front cover on they're identical to the other screws
just pull the panel out and lay it flat. If you set it right on this shelf, it'll lay flat nicely for you. You'll see that there's a large area back in here and there's a wire clip right here. Remember that wire clip. Uh, there is a recessed area in the back of the radio module that I've drilled a hole in so that that wire clip will not interfere with the mounting. The next thing you'll do is you'll take the piece of Velcro that's included in the kit and stick it like this right here. You'll see that there is a uh, an embossed section right where my thumb is. Stick it where it's about a quarter of an inch below that. And that's what your receiver module is going to Velcro to. Here's the hole that I've got drilled in the back of the radio case and it fits right over that uh, clip that's sticking through and this Velcro engages in the other Velcro. You'll need to fold the wiring harness out of the way and it will go just to the side of this embossment. So if you stick your finger back here and you find the hole and you'll feel that clip hitting your fingernail, you'll know that you got it lined up right. Okay, so the radio is now put in place. And now for the wiring. First thing I'm going to do is going to be the ground wire. And on the back of the rectifier diode, there are four wires. Wiggle the black one loose. That's ground. The radio module has a piggyback connector. So you'll slide that one on and then slide the original stock wire onto the back of the uh, piggyback module. And the next step is going to be the kill wires. And those are going to be black and it'll use these micro plugs. If you look back in here, there's a wiring harness. Can you see that clearly? Okay. There's a wiring harness that goes into the micro switch that rides against the cam. Squeeze this little tab right here on the micro switch or micro plug. Just squeeze that and it unplugs. Take the two black wires that come from my uh, radio and they will plug into the stock one. So you plug the stock one. Can you get a good view of this? No. Do you need the light lower to get a better view? No, Let's your hand is in the way. Let's lower the light. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. So when you take my harness, you'll take the uh, female connectors from my harness and plug them into the male connector pins on the stock one be these. If you hold the flashlight then you'll be able to make as much or as little light as you need for the camera. So we're going to plug my harness into the back for the micro switch and then the male pins from mine we're going to plug in the female pins on the stock mother harness. So that's the kill circuit is now wired in. And as you already know, my radios control the economy mode, so you'll be able to toggle in and out of economy mode 
by remote control because the owner's manual says to start it in standards mode and then when it's fully warmed up you can switch it into economy mode. So take the yellow wires from my kit and they go to this white or the two white wires with the same micro plug on them. You unplug the micro plug and this works exactly the same as the other one and we can get a better visibility on this. So take the stock female or excuse me, my female plug to the stock male plug, plug those two together, then the male plug on mine to the stock me female plug, and plug those two together. And now your economy mode is done. Now the starter is this, and you simply push on this to disengage it, and we'll take the uh, male terminal pins on mine and plug it in to the wire with the male terminal pins from stock. The stock harness here again goes to the corresponding harness on mine. So now the remote control for start, stop and um, economy mode are hooked up. The only thing that's left to do is to mount the power switch for the uh, remote control radio because the knob that's on the front here is the master switch and you would turn that knob to the on position or run position but if you wanted to start it by remote control you'd also flip this up to on or down to off and now your radio remote control works. If you leave it in the off position you can start it and run it with the local controls by the button on the front of the panel and using the uh, either the recoil start or the uh, electric start. Okay, so this micro switch I'm going to mount right here and you'll see where it says uh, eco throttle and starter and we're going to drill a 3 16 hole right here and this switch is going to go in from the back. When you mount the switch you'll see that one wire goes into almost the center of the switch, the other wire goes into the top of the switch. When it's mounted, you want it mounted so that one goes into the center and the other one goes into the bottom. If you mount it upside down, it won't be any major issue. It'll simply be that you're going to flip the switch down is on and up is off. And just like a light switch, I want down to be off and up to be on. So when you put the thing together, if you discover you've got it backward, just loosen up the lock ring or the lock nut and spin the switch the other way around and snug it back down again. So at any rate, I'm going to drill a 3 16 hole right here. The 3 16 hole is just slightly too small. Uh, this I believe is 4.72 millimeter and a 3 16 is I think 4.62 millimeter. So when we deburr it, it'll fit nice and tight. If you go to the next size above a 3 16 the switch will fit a little bit loose, which I don't like. I'm going to drill the hole right here. If you drill the hole too high, your starter or your master switch will interfere. So that's why you need to drill it down here. Basically right even with the lettering.
and now you'll see that there's some burring around the hole. I'll clean up the burring with a repairman's reamer, which will also increase the size of the hole just slightly. So that, that switch will go in. There is a, uh, a jam nut on the switch also. Depending on how thick the decal and the stack up is on yours, you may need to remove this jam nut. I'm going to on mine. That panel is fairly thick metal. friction washer, put it in place, and one of the nuts Now's as good a time as any to test and make sure that you've got the switch in right side up. The way to do that is flip the switch down and press button number four and you should see no light indicate that it's received a signal. Flip the switch up and now you can hear the relay clicking for the outlet and you can see a LED light flash down in the bottom. So now you know that this switch is installed correctly. The next step is going to be to install the relay that turns on and off the bottom outlet. Because as you noticed my kits will also control one of the outlets by remote control, so if you have an item that you wish had its own remote control but it doesn't, you plug that into the remote controlled outlet. I'm going to go ahead and take this outlet out only so that you can film it better. It's not necessary to do it in order to install the kit, but it'll make it easier to videotape it.
That's a nice snug fit in there. Okay. So now you can see the red wire that goes to the side terminal. First thing you're going to notice is that the plugs are polarized. This plug, or this uh, slot on the plug, is taller from top to bottom than this one. So this side here is considered the, uh, the line voltage, and this one is the neutral. Uh, in, in, with, if in doubt, just go to the red wire. So first thing I'm going to do, we're going to take this screw out. You don't have to take it all the way out to install the kit. I'm taking it all the way out because it makes it easier to videotape. You can get away with just loosening it up. Incidentally, there's a small lock washer on this screw if you do take it all the way out. I just put back on. Then take a pair of needle nose pliers and break this tab off. And you'll just wiggle it back and forth gently and it'll break off. So now I'm going to put this screw back on and like I say you don't have to take this one off when you install it just loosen it up a little bit. I'm only taking it off so that you can see more clearly in the video. Okay. On the relay of my kit, you'll notice that there's one red wire and one blue wire. I use open ring terminals. The reason I do that is so that you can install it without taking that screw all the way off. So you'll notice that the red wire, you've loosened up the screw on it, you're going to slide the blue wire from my kit in behind the red wire. Make sure you fully engage it. You'll notice that there's a slight hourglass and it's tight right here and you have to push it all the way till it goes to the open section. tighten down this screw. Then we'll loosen this screw up. I'm going to go ahead and take it out just for the purpose of the video. Tighten it back down. Okay. And now we try to work this outlet back into place.
and the outlet is secured by a, a nut going onto a stud, one at the top and one at the bottom. So now the radio is essentially installed. This relay you'll lay along the tops of the circuit breakers near the outlet. The only thing left to do is to install the antenna. There are several options on the antenna. You can leave it bundled up and tuck it below this wiring here and out of the way. Don't pinch any wires when you assemble it. The only thing wrong with install installing it here is you'll reduce the range. If you're familiar with my kits, you'll know that the range is normally 400 feet, but this is a metal panel. The fuel tank is metal. The engine block is metal. So it creates a Faraday cage. You've got a little bit of plastic access around it that the radio waves will travel through. I want to keep it as high a range as possible, so I'm going to mount it to where the antenna actually protrudes up through the housing. That, and I like to do things the most difficult way possible. So, to mount the antenna, where it will give it the largest range, undo the two Phillips head screws on this terminal block right back here. And those, again, are identical to all the other screws that you've removed. And now you'll see that right up here there is a large hole that the stock wiring goes through. And it goes through the back. You can see where my finger is poking through from the back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, antenna wire. We're going to undo the, undo the bread tie and extend it out. Then unscrew the mast from the antenna. Set that aside momentarily. And now we're going to take this and push it through to the back here. So now you'll see that the base of the antenna is pushed through, and you can see it back here now. Right below the fuel output, and it's just sitting in there. Now, we're going to go through from this side. And I'm going to use the mechanic's fingers to get a hold of it and pull it over this way. You can actually do it with anything you want to use. Uh, a long hook, uh, on a wire, you know, pretty much you name it. feed this over the top of the fuel hose. Ultimately, the antenna is going to sit right here. And you'll notice it's on a magnetic base and this is metal. So it'll stick here. Then I'm going to take and pull some of the excess wire so that there's not a whole lot of wire laying around in there. Take the excess wire, I'm going to coil it up. And I'm going to put it behind the aluminum bracket. And I'm going to take some of the zip ties that are included in the kit and just zip tie that bundle of antenna wire so it doesn't go anywhere.
This zip tie I'm not going to pull real super tight. I just want it to hold this wire out of the way so whenever we put the cover on, it doesn't cause us any problems. Just kind of hold it out of the way a little bit. Okay. Now if you come back around the front, we can put these two screws back in place and hold that terminal block. Is that well lit? Okay. So now you can see our antenna wire goes back with the other wires. Now, what we're going to do is you remember that the fuel selector knob goes right through this area here. So we don't want a whole lot of wires going over this area that we're going to have to push out of the way to put the cover on. So we're going to hold those wires down. Okay, on mine, I'm finding it possibly easier to put the, uh, the relay at the top above that terminal block so it'll lay up here. Just trying to get everything pushed down into place. The other, other flashlight. Okay. And take your flashlight, shine it in here, and make sure that none of the wires have gotten in the way. And on this one, one wire has moved. We're blocking my uh, access. So I'm just going to take it and push it out of the way with a screwdriver. And now I've got a straight shot. You'll notice that the uh, recessed area has three sharp corners and one rounded corner. When we took it apart, the, uh, the master switch was in the off position. So we know from that how to line the switch up.
okay, if you're doing an actual install, this would be a good time to roll it outside and test it. And what you do is you move the uh, master switch to the run position. You won't need to move it to the start position because it's going to auto choke now. And it'll auto choke whether you use the remote or if you use the uh, um, local switch. So you would move your master switch to the run position and turn your radio switch power on and then you would hit button one on the remote control and it would start. Hit button two on the remote control and it would stop. Then if you restarted it and press button three on the remote control, it would drop it into economy mode. Hit button three again, it would put it back in standard run mode. If you hit button four, it would shut off this outlet. If you hit button four again, it would turn this outlet back on. Uh, the reason why I have it as the default position as the outlet is on instead of off is if you go swimming or something like that with the remote in your pocket, you've ruined the remote control and you have to order a, a new transmitter from me or use a spare transmitter. But at any rate, that way, if you wanted to turn this on or off, you'd simply turn the generator master switch off, shut the radio off, then restart the generator manually, and that remote or that outlet would be on again. In case, basically, so if anything goes wrong with the radio, that outlet starts working again. Um, I have confidence in my work, so I'm not going to be rolling it outside to test it, but I do recommend that at this point you'd roll it outside and go ahead and test it. So now all we have to do is put the covers back on. Uh, examine everything and make sure that there's no wires pinched where the cover goes through. <clears throat> this side cover, this is going to be the bottom. You've got these three tabs that slide into holes along the bottom. Then lift this top rubber flap out of the way and push the pins into the grommets. That one went in easy. Okay. Then push this little rubber plug in place. Then tighten the two screws. This cover is now in place. On this side here, remember that I've got one of my fuel kits installed on this generator. If you don't have a fuel kit installed, then you'll simply let the recoil rope roll back in. Make sure that these wires are not going to interfere with anything. I'm going to put the hose from my fuel kit back onto this hose barb and tighten down this hose clamp. Make sure the cover's fully in place. We'll put these three bolts into the bottom.
and take two more screws. You know what I forgot to do? Mark this cover for the antenna. I'm going to go ahead and leave this blooper in there just to make people feel a little bit more comfortable. Anytime you make a mistake, you can always fix it. Okay, here's the antenna base. So what we're going to do is we're going to screw the antenna onto the base. And then we're going to tuck it back right on top of this flange here. Notice where the antenna comes through, and we're going to cut a notch right here for the antenna. And I'm going to mark it. Probably the easiest way to mark it is with a pair of cutters. Now, if you install the antenna up here, slide this piece of heat shrink sleeving over the antenna so that it does not rub through the insulation on the antenna and start touching this piece of metal because that will disturb the standing wave ratio of it. The antenna has to be a specific length and if it's longer or shorter it's not going to work. So we put this piece of heat shrink in place And now I'm just eyeing it to see exactly where the uh, notch needs to go. I'm actually going to take one of the zip ties and I'm going to put it around this piece of heat shrink and around this aluminum casting so it'll hold the mast of the antenna in place securely and it won't move around. It'll also keep the piece of heat shrink from sliding down. cut that notch deep enough. Not really. Okay. a chainsaw file and file the base of this notch so it's round. Go ahead and widen that just a little bit more so that, that file will go in there. Push 
this back into place. See how we're doing. Okay. It looks a lot nicer there. Okay, so we're back on our way again. I'm going to tighten down these three bolts at the bottom. As I said earlier, you could put the antenna anywhere you want. I just wanted to put it in the most difficult place for the purpose of the video just to show that it could be done. You can either leave it behind this panel or when you run it through from here, lay it in the bottom zip tied to one of the fuel lines or the evaporative emission canister uh, hoses and that way it'll sit, sit in this side. Neither of those methods will have the uh, antenna mast up to the top of the generator and exposed for 360 degrees around the generator which will give you better range. Uh, obviously behind that side cover will be better range than in front here because this is a metal cover, the fuel tank is metal and so on. Here you got the metal fuel tank above it but the side cover there is plastic so you won't have a uh, a Faraday cage 360 degrees around it. Okay, then there's three screws that go into the back that we pulled out earlier. Fortunately, Predator makes all the screws identical unlike Honda and Yamaha, who like to make every single screw different. And then one screw goes in the front. If you look at the antenna, you can see it leaning in at a little angle. If I had to cut that notch just a little bit deeper, it would go straight up. Okay. Now to put the wheels back on. The rear wheel. You put the wheel, a washer, and a uh, cotter key. Then put the hubcap back in. The front wheel, you have this lock plate. It goes on first, just make sure the lock plate is engaged here. Then the wheel slides on. And put your washer in place and then the cotter key. And then the hub cap. That concludes the installation portion of it. Uh, if you're interested in one of these kits, please go to the link in the description section down below. It'll take you to my website, or you can go to PinellasPowerProducts.com.